Mega Mechatronics. Welcome back to Mega Mechatronics. We are continuing our Tuning 101 series with part number three. So let's get into this. We're going to be looking at fueling strategies where we're actually going to be calibrating airflow because airflow is proportional to fuel flow. So the first type is called speed density. And this is where we're going to calculate airflow based on several different inputs and a bunch of lookup tables. So we need at, at the minimum RPM, throttle position, manifold absolute pressure, and intake air temperature. And then there could be some other inputs to further optimize the airflow estimates. This type of tuning is going to be sensitive to mild and major modifications where you're going to have to retune the speed density or, or the volumetric efficiency table, which drives the speed density system. And uh, changes in altitude are also going to affect the tune more significantly than other methods. But this is used in aftermarket EFI systems that are being developed today. So... The reason is packaging and makes it a lot more simple for someone to convert an engine using a throttle body injection unit that looks very, very similar to a carburetor. So it's pretty much a bolt-on mod and you don't have to deal with a bunch of custom piping and things like that. So the next type will be the mass airflow types uh, of fueling strategies where... It's going to measure actual airflow, which is awesome. You're measuring airflow. There's going to be a little bit of um, variation with temperature, but they usually have a built-in temperature sensor and can, can compensate for that. So this is going to be a little bit better for mild modifications where you bolt on some stuff and you don't even have to change your tune because it's compensating for it. Uh, and the same with altitude. For major modifications... You might, it might turn into a restriction, the mass airflow system, and there were issues with this earlier, but nowadays you can put in a larger mass airflow meter and then rescale the tables in, in the, the, with your tuner. And mass airflow systems are, are pretty accurate at low speeds and low throttle, and that can translate into much better economy uh, with everything set up correctly. So which one is best? And you guys aren't going to like this answer. Well, it depends because both of them can do the job and both of them have their benefits. And it really does depend on your application. If you have a street car, um, street quote unquote racer, I'd recommend the mass airflow system because it's simpler and it's going to, it's going to give you the best economy. But maybe for a drag race application, speed density would work just fine because you're, under wide open throttle and the speed density system will work just fine using that and if you go to a different racetrack at a different altitude you can compensate for that because you probably have a tuner with you so again it really does depend on your application both have their merits i think mass airflow system is going to be easier to tune for a street car So I did mention volumetric efficiency for the speed density type of system. So let's look at that. So volumetric efficiency is how well does the engine pump air? So one engine cycle will pump a certain amount of air, a certain volume of air. So how efficient is it moving that volume of air? So for example, let's look at a one liter displacement engine, a 1000 cc engine, um, and at 0% volumetric efficiency, it is pumping 0 liters of air. And if we do 50% volumetric efficiency, the engine's pumping half a liter per cycle. And it's everything in between that. You know, 33% volumetric efficiency, with our easy example, that's going to be 0.33 liters. So 100% volumetric efficiency, it's pumping 1 liter. 100% is... Uh, achievable by very uh, optimized race engines with a lot of time and a lot of uh, engineering, uh, but usually a street car is, you know, 90% you're doing pretty good. 
And then 100, you can go above 100%, so 150% volumetric efficiency. The engine's pumping 1.5 liters. So a one liter engine is pumping 1.5 liters. Wow. So this is why we really like force induction because you can take a smaller engine and make it a, a larger displacement engine because there's no replacement for displacement. So you can either go to a bigger engine, go to a, a, a bigger V8, or you can bolt on a supercharger or a turbocharger and that will increase your displacement. So if you take a look at the speed density main calibration table, we see uh, two scales here. So the vertical axis in this example is RPM. And then at the top there, we have a manifold absolute pressure that goes from 15 kPa to 105 kPa. And you can see the 105 is right by just above 101 kPa atmospheric pressure. So the values in the cells will represent um, an airflow. So higher the value, the more airflow. And if we have more airflow, then we need to add more fuel flow because the computer knows what air fuel ratio we want to run. So it will proportionally increase that fuel flow. So here's a three dimensional representation of this table. And you can see where it gets yellow and orange. That's going to be a wide open throttle condition. So speed density, we can easily log uh, our long-term fuel trims or air fuel ratio errors in the cell. So these scales exactly match exactly that calibration table. So the, the steps in the RPM are the same and the steps in the manifold absolute pressure scale are the exact same because there's going to be a one-to-one -one correlation between a cell in here and a cell in the calibration table and that's going to make it really easy to calibrate this. So we'll we'll be logging air fuel ratio error for wide open throttle tuning or open loop open loop tuning. Otherwise, you're going to want to use long-term fuel trim values because if you use air fuel ratio error while in closed loop, it'll give you false readings because the long-term fuel trims are moving it to stoichiometric, so your air fuel ratio error is always going to be near stoichiometric, even though your long-term fuel trims can be like way off. Uh, so that's why we need to use long-term fuel trims when we're doing our non-wide open throttle and closed loop tuning. So in the cells, you can see there's minus 4%, minus 3% down low, then it gets shaded red where it's positive on the long-term fuel trims or error. And that means we're a little bit lean. That's why we colored it red. Okay, let's take a look at logging volumetric efficiency errors. So in the histogram display chart over on the right hand side, we have our volumetric efficiency table scaled exactly the same as the calibration table. And in the cells, it's putting long term fuel trim data. So the longer you, you're sitting in a cell, the more data you're going to gather. And you can see we get on the gas and the KPA uh, increases as well as RPM. And we'll just be driving around trying to fill in these cells and trying to hold the cursor uh, by manipulating the throttle and shifting gears. If you have a manual, you can try to get data points, more data points in particular cells to get um, a better average, a better uh, sample size rather. So as we're cruising around, you can see the long-term fuel trim on the, the gauge on the left, on the very, very left, you see LTB1, that's long-term fuel trim, and below that's a short term, but we're logging the long-term fuel trim. So you can see it's changing some of these data points in here. And as we get a little bit more aggressive as far as driving, we should see some more data points. So that's shift. When you see it go down and around and do a circle, that, that's shifting basically because you let off the gas so the RPM drops and you and the load drops so obviously it goes back and then comes back around as you get back on the gas. So you can see um, with this particular vehicle, I have 
speed density disabled above, uh, I believe, 2800 RPM because it, I, the, the engine was naturally aspirated, but now it is turbocharged. So anything above 105 kPa is, uh, useless for the, using this type of table. So that's why I'm mass airflow tuning this vehicle. However, I, I did tune the speed density for fail safe in case the mass airflow goes out. I will have safe, uh, fueling data at low throttle below 2800 RPM. So going back to our VE error table, let's look at our error table versus our actual calibration table that will input in, uh, that what the ECU uses to look up airflow data for each engine uh, condition. And in this example, I'm just picking out some cells. There's some easy ways where you can select the whole chart and apply the errors to the calibration data. But we're just going to focus on a couple cells to show you the one-to-one -one relationship. So if we look at 26 kPa at 800 RPMs, we're at minus 4%. So what we need to do is take away my 4% uh, or we need to multiply that 1,000 214.8 number that the arrow's pointing at, we need to multiply that by 0.96. So that's going to remove 4% fueling. Uh, another example at 43 kPa at 3600 RPM, we have an airflow value of 1081.2. So here again, we need to remove 4% of airflow to reduce the fueling by 4%. And over here on the lean areas, definitely need to enrich in this spot. So at 60 kPa, 4,800 RPM, showing a value of 1594. So we need to add 8%. So 1 plus 8%, uh, 1.08. So we'll multiply 1.08 times 1594. That will give us a larger airflow number, which will give us more fuel. So now moving on to the math strategy. So instead of speed density, we're going to look at mass airflow tuning of the engine. So we have a mass airflow lookup table. And this is only two-dimensional. So I'd have the two-dimensional graph instead of uh, three-dimensional representation. So here is the math mass airflow lookup table. And the math uh, outputs either a frequency like uh, General Motors uses a frequency in Hertz, so higher the frequency, um, the more airflow, or uh, they could be an analog reading, a zero to five volt. Uh, so higher the voltage, the more airflow. So you can see on the, the chart there, we have an airflow um, amount there, and I, that, uh, that's pounds per minute of air, actual airflow, versus uh, the frequency. So you can see at, let's say, 4,600 hertz on this chart is a, a 3.052 pounds per minute of airflow. And again, we have a logged table, a math error table. We have an uh, error in air fuel ratio. So for example here, uh, again, this under wide open throttle open loop, we're going to use the wideband error data because... The, the oxygen sensor and long-term fuel trim data is not relevant for wide open throttle and open loop running. Um, so for non-wide open throttle and you're in closed loop, you'll be using long-term fuel trim values. So again, at 1450 uh, hertz, we need to um, reduce 9%. We're a little too rich. So you can see how the color scales help us visualize uh, rich and lean. Uh, but when we get higher up uh, above uh, 2,800, we need to add a little bit more um, airflow. So, for example, at 3,400 hertz on our table up above is 1.389, but we have an error of 7%. We're 7% lean, so we need to add 7% airflow to, to add 7% more fuel. Uh, so under 34, we do under 3400 hertz, 1.389 multiplied by 1.07. That's that's adding uh, 7%, and that'll increase that number and give us some more fuel. 
So let's collect some data. And you can see the, the cells highlighting on this chart down here, uh, depending on what the mass airflow frequency is. We could see that down low, we're about minus seven on the field trim. We'll shift here. Cruise control. And we're, so right now we're collecting data. So it's getting, it's, it's constantly putting that data in the cell. So it's taking a long-term field trim, putting it in a sort of a histogram, uh, dependent on their frequency. So when you're driving around, you kind of want to get all of the cells filled that you want to tune.